Welcome to part 2 of the Snowtrack Shader Tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part I've introduced the concept of tessellation and in this part we will start writing out and working on the Snowtrack Shader itself. I have been wanting to make something like this for quite a while and never understood how people did these things with shaders. Writing shaders sounded to me like some magic that only advanced programmers could do. So I'm happy to bring you the good news that everyone can do it and this tutorial should help you get some better understanding. I would like to thank Bodhi Donselar for introducing me to this shader concept. He's a very talented graphics programmer, so check out his portfolio, the link is in the description. Now I've added another feature to the shader. The created tracks on the terrain will disappear over time as the terrain will be raised back by falling snow. We'll cover this at the end of the tutorial. I will start with talking shortly about the technical approach of this shader so you will know why we will take the steps we are going to take working towards creating a fully functional shader. We will be writing several different scripts that work together and the first script is a snowtrack.shader file. Most of the required content of this file will be written during the current part. We will apply knowledge from part 1 in creating this shader. This file will be applied to the mesh we want to tessellate and contains variables to connect all our textures to. In this file we will bring everything together to show our tessellated snow. The second file we need to write is a drawText.shader file. This is a hidden shader that draws to a splat map that we will create. Based on the value of red in the pixels of this texture, the snow will be either present or not. This shader contains instructions on how to draw to the texture with what color, brush size and color strength. The third file will not be a shader but a C-sharp script. This script will run on the car and raycast down at the position of the wheels. The raycast hits the terrain and the UV location will be sent to the draw tracks to draw onto the splat map. In this script we will update the texture using graphics.blit and the main shader will take the new texture values into account. When all of this is done, we can add more features to the snow track shader such as raising the terrain with new snow and creating footstep tracks based on custom drawn brushes. We'll start off with a new empty project and let's go to game object, 3D object and select the plane. We will be using just this plane for our shader. Now go to assets, right click, create, go to shader and select the standard server shader. And we'll call this the snow tracks. I've opened up the shader in Visual Studio on the left and on the right you see the tessellation example of the Unity manual. We will now be implementing tessellation into the standard shader and add all the variables we need for our snow track shader. So let's start at the top of the tessellation sample and let's see what we need in our shader. And we are using the distance based tessellation. So first of all we need this test, so let's go to properties and add that. And the next thing we need is the displacement text, so let's also add that to our shader. Um, the next thing we need is the displacement value. I'll clean this up afterwards. Let's just first add it all. And I don't think we need anything of the properties anymore. Now we also need the Pragma target 4.6, so let's change this to 4.6. We can remove this line. We also need some uh, pragmas in here as well. And what we need is the vertex displacement and the tessellate test distance. So let's copy paste that as well. And we need everything from the include tessellation up until here. So let's copy this and go under the pragma target and let's paste that. Now we don't need anything more from this tessellation shader so let's go to our snow track shader and make this uh, window bigger. Now let's scroll to the top and I'm going to change the name of this text to splat and also change here the name to splat map. And instead of using gray, we're going to use black here as a default. Now, because we changed it to splat, we also need to change the disk text here to splat and here as well to splat. Now, we need to change two different things to the shader. Correct the way the displacement is being calculated and add alert between two different textures based on the splat map color. 
we'll start by having a look at the displacement function. So this is the displacement function. At the top, this function says that it uses the input and output of app data and is named phi. In the struct app data, we can see vertex, tangent, normal, and text chord. And all these functions are available now in the void disp because we're using the in out app data. Now let's have a look at the first line of this function. We create a new temporary float called D and it is looking at the texture called splat and reach each pixel of that splat map. At the end we see a dot R which means it reads the red value of that pixel and finally that value is multiplied by the property value displacement. Now in the next line the displacement is used to multiply by the normal direction of the vertex in a mesh that this shader is running on. Now to test out how the displacement works, let's save the script and go back to Unity. And we can create a new material based on this shader. Let's call this Snow Tracks as well. And let's apply the material to the terrain. Now here we've got the displacement value and we can put it very high or very low but nothing will be happening because we require a splat map. And later on we're going to instantiate a new splat map render texture by script. But for now I'm going to create a splat map myself. Just to test it out. Now over in Photoshop I've created a black texture and I'm going to draw some red pixels onto it to imitate some snow tracks. Alright, I'm going to save this texture and import it into Unity. Now here I've got the saved texture and I can drag and drop this into the splat map texture. Now we can already see something happening. Set the tessellation a bit higher. And we can see exactly where I've drawn. Now set the displacement a little bit lower. Now you can immediately see the problem because we need to invert this system because the track should go down and not upwards. Now back in the shader let's invert the direction and we can simply do that by changing the plus to a minus and if we save this we can see an inverted result. But there's still one little problem and I can show this by instantiating a cube and we're going to give the cube a rigid body so it will fall down and let's say that this is a tire. Let's uh, scale it a little bit down. Let's say this is a tire and it will fall down until it hits the ground. Now you'll see that the collider of the terrain is on this side. But I want the collider of the terrain to be at the level of where the ground hits its lowest value. So we need to change something to make sure that everything of the vertices are pushed up a little bit. Now to do that we'll add another line and here we'll say that v.vertex.xyz plus is the v.normal multiplied by the displacement and that should make sure that no matter at what value we set the displacement it will push all the vertices upwards. So let's save the script and see the result back in Unity. And now when we play the scene, we can see that the cube is falling down to the lowest position of the terrain. Now that we have fixed the displacement, let's create a lerp between two different textures of snow based on the color of the splat map. And for that we are going to add some new properties. We're going to create a ground texture and a snow texture. So let's first move the main texture above one line above the splat and let's rename this to snow texture and let's also rename the color to snow color and we'll change this to snow and let's change this to snow color now let's copy paste this and we'll 
change the snow color to ground color and we'll change the snow texture to ground texture. Let's change the name here as well, otherwise it's a bit confusing in the editor. Now that we've changed and added some properties, we also have to declare them in the subshader, so let's do that. So instead of main text, we're going to use ground text. And I'll place this color move up to here, and we'll call this ground color. And now let's copy paste this and make it the snow variables. So let's call this snow text. And we also need a snow color. Now let's also change the input. UV main text will become ground text. Copy paste this again. Let's do this twice because we've also got the snow text. And I forgot to add this one, but we've also got the splat. Now that we've declared all our variables, let's scroll down to the void surf. Now the fix for C is about the color, and we need to change this line to a lerping between two different colors, or two different textures. So this line won't work anymore because we've changed the main text to ground text, so let's just uh, command this out and rewrite our own function here. So we'll declare a fixed for again and we'll call this C and it's going to be a lerp and we're going to lerp between uh, one texture and another texture with a certain amount. So that's how a lerp is done. Now what we want to lerp between is the texture of the snow text and the ground text and multiplied by its own color. So we can just copy and paste this. So copy this and paste it here and we need to change this to the snow text. And instead of in.uv main text, we're going to use the in.uv snow text. And color does not exist anymore, so we need to change this to snow color. Now we can copy paste this again and place this here. And we just need to change everything to the ground. So type here ground text, go to the UV ground text and it's going to be multiplied by the ground color. Now a lerp is always between 0 and 1 so we still need to declare what the amount is going to be. Now for the amount we want to read the value of the pixels in our splat map. So let's create here a new half and we'll call this amount. And instead of writing this out, we can scroll back up and we can apply a similar way as here. So let's copy this and paste it here. We got a texture 2D with level of detail and it's going to talk to the splat. And instead of the v.text chord, we're going to use the in.uv splat. So if the pixel of this texture is uh, black, then it's going to use the snow texture. And if it's going to be red, it'll use the ground color and texture or somewhere in between of these two. So let's save this. Oh, I forgot a semicolon here. So let's save this again and go back to Unity. Now with the plane selected, we can edit the properties and we've got here the ground color and the snow color. So if I change the snow color to, for example, pink, and we can change the ground color to yellow, you'll see that it is based on how high or low the ground is. So this is working. Now what I did in my example, I took two different textures from the internet. I did not create these myself. Uh, we've got the snow and we've got the snow ground. So I go to the plane, go to snow main and snow ground, apply these and I've set the color here to white and I've set the color to the ground to a little gray and uh, if I 
go to shade it and you'll see that it looks a bit like this. Now we are done creating the main shader and in the next part I will teach you how to create a splat map through C sharp and draw on a splat map using a different shader so that we can dynamically raise and lower the terrain. But for now I want to thank you for following this tutorial. If you found this useful hit the thumbs up and if you want to stay updated with new release parts subscribe to my channel. To support me in creating these tutorials consider becoming a patron on my Patreon. You'll then get access to all of the source code of release tutorials.